There would be tidal waves going back and forth. The Bible says in Genesis 8, the waters were going and returning. That's the Hebrew phrase, halak vashub, going and returning. I believe layers of sedimentary mud were laid out during the flood, and then the mountains arose, the valleys sank down, they would be bent and twisted, and then erosion would take off the surface, depositing more layers on top. That's why we have what's called an unconformity in geology, best explained by Noah's flood. The Bible says the ark rested in the seventh month. Noah didn't get out till the thirteenth month. He stayed in for six extra months. Why? Well, for one thing, there's nothing to eat outside. Number two, the ground is still muddy. And the water was still going and returning. It's not safe to get out of the boat yet. Probably Noah hit bottom, cut off the anchor stones, and then the ark got picked up and moved a few miles and resettled again by another wave coming back as the waters were going and returning. We cover about the Noah's ark anchor stones on video number three of our series. And there's nothing outside to build your house with anyway. The Bible says the waters decreased continually. So in the Hoven theory, the ice caps gradually melted back, slowly raising the ocean levels. During the first few hundred years, there was time to spread out around the world. God came down, confused the languages at the Tower of Babel. People said, I'm out of here. They took off, spread around the world, had their kids and grandkids. And over a few hundred years, the water came up and they ended up trapped where they are today. There's a great book about the spreading of populations around the world after the flood. This book called Noah to Abram. The Turbulent Years. It's in our catalog. You can order that. So people came across to America from both sides. Came across the Bering Land Strait and you can walk from England to Iceland to Greenland to America if the water was lower. As the ice caps melt back, they leave behind the obvious features that we see. Yes, there really was an ice age, best explained by the flood. And then in the days of Peleg, the earth was divided. Peleg was born a hundred years after the flood. I think his daddy named him that because something had changed. It's, there are four theories of what the days of Peleg means. What does it mean divided? What was divided? One theory is the languages and nations were divided at the Tower of Babel. Second theory is the continents moved. I don't buy that one. Third theory is the water came up from melting ice. That would divide the continents. That's probably what, the one I would fall in, the category I would believe. Number four theory is that the land was surveyed. They got to be so many people, they said, look, let's, let's just draw some lines on the ground here, okay? This is my yard, and that's your yard, and let's put a rock right here and a rock right here. They started surveying the land and dividing the land up. That's natural. You've got to do that eventually as populations grow. So, as the melting ice went into the oceans, the oceans ended up deeper, wider, and colder. Cold water absorbed CO2, so that would take away some of the greenhouse protection, and lifespans were shorter. The deepest point in the English Channel is only 150 feet deep. You know, not even from here to the back wall. So we get these ideas, wow, you know, it's blue, therefore it's water. Yeah, it is, but some of it's deep and some of it's not very deep. I think the flood's the best explanation for that. As the ocean filled in, it would gradually get too full and flow over into the Mediterranean Sea. Probably the Straits of Gibraltar were washed out as the water flowed over and backfilled the Mediterranean. Then it got too full and backfilled past Sicily. Maybe that's why they're finding underwater cities. For the first few hundred years, people would be building their cities in some of these areas, and then all of a sudden the water starts coming up. Hey guys, we've got to get out of here. They had to abandon their cities. Underwater cities are found quite a few places. As the water filled in the Black Sea, they had to abandon the whole civilization there. Underwater cities were found in the Black Sea, under 150 feet of water. They didn't build them there. And today the earth still shows the effects of this flood to remind us God hates sin. Whenever you're pumping your gas in your car, you can think, boy, this came as a result of Noah's flood. This electricity running these lights here is powered by coal, probably. They're burning up some of the trees that were growing in the Garden of Eden in the pre-flood world. Every time you see articles in the paper about dinosaur bones, it can remind you of the flood in the days of Noah. See, God left enough evidence behind that anybody with a brain can look around and say, Boy, God, you hate sin. I better live for you. And Satan has worked very hard to take all of the evidence from the planet that shows God's flood, and he's twisted it around, and he's teaching kids today, all this evidence shows evolution. He's taken what God has created as, as evidence and twisting it around. I want to leave you, uh, leave you with this fossil in, in your mind here. This is a fossil of a fish swallowing another fish. Either that or the little one is a dentist. I don't know. Okay. 
But neither one thought they were going to die that day. The big one had the little one halfway down and the flood came and the mud probably covered them up and they, they died. The Bible says it's appointed that a man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Harry Truman lived right on the side of Mount St. Helens. Tim Barron's a friend of mine from uh, St. Louis. I'm on their show every Wednesday morning, the Tim and Al show. He told me he witnessed to Harry and tried to get him saved and Harry wouldn't listen. Harry cussed and swore and he said, I, I, he listened, but he, he, did, he did not get saved. Well, the officials came in and said, Harry, you live right on the side of Mount St. Helens. This volcano is going to explode. We would like you to move. Harry said, I've been living here all my life and I'm staying right here. And he did. He stayed right there. He died. Harry's one of those they never found after the explosion. Isn't that stupid to live on the side of a volcano that's about to explode and refuse to move? Wouldn't listen to the warning. You know, it's just about as stupid to know, hey, God sent his angels and his messengers and his Bible and says, hey, this world's going to be destroyed. You better get saved. And people say, I don't want to get saved. I'm staying right here. <laughs> well, duh, you're as dumb as Harry. You ought to give your heart to the Lord and get saved, okay? Harry refused to accept Christ. As far as we know, he's in hell today. I mean, I hope not, but that's as far as we know the case. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. God is not willing that any should perish. If you're here today and you're not saved, God wants you to be saved. He wants to forgive your sin, take you to heaven when you die. But just like it was in the days of Noah, the Bible says, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes back. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, and they don't care. Got the same thing today. Until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is coming very soon. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I'd recommend that you get busy and say, God, use me for something. I want to persuade somebody to go to heaven. He's coming quickly. What are you doing with your life? If you want to be saved, if you want somebody to explain to you how to go to heaven, we'll have an invitation at the end of this tape to show you what the Bible says of how you can go to heaven.